hey and welcome back to X Canyon. My name's Sophie and here I share tutorials for all creatives, whether you're working in Affinity, Notion or just building your digital toolkit. Here we focus on building one skill at a time. And today we're diving into the world of pattern creation in the all new Affinity app. Affinity have actually undergone a visual overhaul and they are now offering their software for free alongside an optional paid AI subscription which merges with Canva, which I will dive into in future videos, but today I'll show you how to build your own reusable pattern template so you can bring your pattern designs and art into surface design or clothing apparel. I'll explain the difference between what a block file is and what a pattern file is and at the end I'll also share the two top websites I use to print my patterns professionally. So let's grab your designs, open Affinity and let's get started. Alright, first up let's create our template. This document is a template which means you'll be able to use it again and again. So once you make it, you can simply drop in new elements each time you want to design a new pattern. So let's head over to File, New, and create a new document that is 5,000 pixels by 5,000 pixels. And we wanna make sure that they're 300 DPI and also the artboard is turned off. This size works great because it gives you plenty of resolution for print and still keeps your file manageable. Now, let's draw a square, a perfect square, the same size as your document, so 5,000 by 5,000, which you can do by dragging it from the top corner to the bottom corner. Make sure you have your snapping guides on, and we are then going to rotate it 45 degrees. If you press shift and rotate it, it locks it into 15 degree increments. Now, we just need to bring the size down by dra dragging the top corner down and the bottom corner up. Now this is the diamond shape that will help us create seamless patterns. I'm gonna go and give it a fill color, uh, kind of like um, orange and stroke of blue. And I'm gonna make the stroke five points and make sure that it is center aligned to the shape. We'll then turn this square into a symbol and you can get there by going to vector, create symbol. And as you can see in the layers panel, it now has a solid orange line on the side of it, which means that it is a symbol. Symbols are incredibly powerful in Affinity because they let you edit one instance and update them all at once. And that's the foundation of our repeat pattern system. And this will all become more understandable in a second. Now let's start creating the additional tiles that will allow us to have the pattern preview and really see how the pattern will work. So let's duplicate the symbol and you can do this in two ways, Command J or by clicking Option on a Mac and dragging it out. Now I'm gonna create a three by three square. Mm -hmm, one up here, one here, one here, uh, one here. Um, and because we are expanding outside of the block file, you will need to hit backslash, and then this allows us to see beyond the block file canvas. And this is a clip to canvas uh, shortcut. Now let's show you what an instance can do. So let's select one of the rectangles inside the symbol, and I'm gonna remove the fill color, but just keep the stroke. And as you can see, by editing one, it actually edits all of them. So head over to your layers panel and what we're gonna do is group the other diamond shapes together, but leave the center one. And we're gonna call them pattern preview. So let's click uh, backslash again, and let's just forget about those other rectangles. And what we're left with is the main center symbol. And this is the guide, and we will rename that layer as guide. So what we've done is set up the framework and this is the template. So go ahead and save as. Now we've done that, let's focus on the block file. And this is where your pattern elements will live. The block file is basically the master tile that repeats seamlessly when the pattern is exported. And you can see what that pattern will look like when you hit the backslash, because that's the pattern preview. 
The next step we need to do is play around with our designs and bring it all together into a pattern. If you've watched my other video on removing the paper background from your scanned artwork, this is where this now pays off because we can bring in these clean, transparent PNGs of your illustrations into the pattern creation. I'll link the video to that in the description below or up here if you haven't seen it yet. Let's start by dragging in our artwork into our diamond. If you don't have any items in your asset panel, then go ahead to File, click Place, and select the elements you want to bring in. Once you've got them, just click once when you see the circle and the arrow, and you can then resize them as you want. I'm gonna bring in my frangipanis and my giraffe and resize them and just sort of fiddle about with them and see how I actually want them to look on here. I'm gonna do some overlapping slightly so then you can see what it looks like when it overlaps. So go ahead and arrange your elements however you like, uh, florals, animals, shapes, whatever fits your style. Now you may say, but there is nothing repeating and that's because we need to nest these elements inside the main symbol, uh, symbol layer. So click shift and select all the layers, all the elements that are in your layers panel and drag them in between the symbol and the guide layer. And now here you can see that they've all become a symbol because they've got the solid orange line next to them. And now you can see how this pattern is repeating. If you can't see it fully because you've just got your block file, then make sure that you uh, select backslash as this will unable the clip to canvas. So the key difference is the block file is the tile that allows you to repeat the pattern infinitely while the pattern file is a large scale file of the pattern but if you were to stack these next to each other there wouldn't actually be a seamless pattern. So we need to make sure more or less that we're keeping within the diamond guides as this makes sure that there is no overlapping. But here as you can see my giraffe is overlapping my other giraffe and if I go back to my symbol and select that giraffe you can now see how it moves with all the other ones and that is the magic of symbols. And that's it. You've now created your template for creating truly seamless patterns. So now let's say that you have this design and you want to make sure that it works seamlessly. So let's go and test that out. Before we go and export it, let's remove these blue guidelines. So over on your layers panel, we're just gonna to toggle off the visibility on that blue guide. And we're also just going to backslash and just remove the pattern preview just to make it a little bit more simple and easy to, to have a look at. So head over to the export, which is at the top right side of the screen and click the drop down. This should now show your main block file and make sure that it's a PNG and just simply click export. Remember, the block file repeats endlessly if it's stacked above, below, or side by side. The pattern file is just one big document with your pattern, but it will not stack endlessly. Now, let's test it out with the block file. Now you've saved the block file, let's go ahead and open a new document of 12,000 pixels by 12,000 pixels, and let's bring it in. So first off, we're gonna to go to File, Place, and we're gonna start duplicating it. Duplicate it as many times as you need to to make sure that it is working and you can see that it stacks perfectly. Now, let me go ahead and delete all these layers and let's make the pattern file. If you want to create the pattern file, you could do it this way manually, just stacking the same block over and over again. Or what you can do is head over to the rectangle shape and drop it over the canvas, the same size, 12,000 by 12,000. And we're gonna to go to the flood tool. And if you look to the top, there is a little gray box which says bitmap. It will allow you then to select the block file pattern and it will simply fill the entire shape with the pattern, making it much, 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 much faster. Now this is a great size for websites because websites like uh, print on demand sites that they just want the pattern and the 12,000 pixels is great because it's big enough to cover most things. Um, what you can do with this bitmap fill is you can change the rotation and the size of the pattern and it's, that's great if you want to use it for different things like maybe you want to make it a tea towel or a wallpaper but you want the size to be smaller, you know, like the elements to be smaller or bigger. 
Now, if you're happy with this as your pattern file, you can just go ahead and save it. And then you've got both your big pattern file and your block file pattern. So now that you've got your finished pattern, let's talk about printing. My two favorite websites for turning these digital files into real products are Cotton Bee, which are perfect for printing on fabrics. I have my daughter's muslin that I printed. Pattern Bank, it's great if you want to license or sell your designs directly to brands as well. Both, uh, they both accept seamless pattern tiles and your exported affinity file will fit perfectly. So to wrap it all up, there you have it, your very own reusable template design inside Affinity. Now you can now go on to set this up to build entire collections, uh, you know, create your own patterns and start basically getting your ready work ready to upload to print on demand sites or even just get your own designs printed for your own projects. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe and follow for more tutorials for all types of creatives. And as always, go beyond and create within.